Good morning, everyone. My name is Mac, the proud owner of Cherry Bomb, and we're back out in Manassas, Virginia, at Roachworks Garage with the awesome, amazing Toyota technician Ricky Evans. And so today we've got two things on the agenda. The first thing is not even what I'm holding, because we have a full set of RCI skid plates that we're going to throw on, and then we also have, if we have time, we have the set of All Pro upper control arms that we're going to try and fit in today as well. So let's kick off this install. So let's kick off this install. So we're actually going to do the UCAs first just because we think it's going to be the most painful so we want to get that done. We're going to remove the sway bar end link. We are going to remove this 12 millimeter brake line. We're going to remove the 10 millimeter ABS sensor. Remove the cotter pin. Loosen the ball joint nut separate the ball joint from the spindle get that out the way remove the inner splash seals get those out of the way and then we're going to gently massage this inner trim right here out so that we can remove the upper control arm bolt which runs the entire length of this and toyota did not engineer this to be very easy So the splash guards obviously are gone. The sway bar link has been disconnected and now we're going for the brake line. ABS bracket on nope. the brake no. line. Brake line. Okay. This one is the ABS line. Yes. Boom, boom. Brake nuts, not hearts. More fingers. More fingers. So y'all remember that on the rear we struggled with the brake line so much? Alright, we need to go down just a little bit more so we can clear. Well, they're back again in the front. So this is, this bolt here runs all the way from there up to there. And that is for the upper control arm. And right now, this brake line is getting in the way right here of us trying to get um, a wrench or a socket in there. So what we're going to have to do anyway is we have to move that metal out to take the bolt out. And so since we have to move it anyway, we're going to bend it now so we have room on that side to put a socket on that side and a wrench on this side. So time to bend. All right, so we're using vice grips to bend this out, right? You know, like that. But obviously, when you got little stubby guys, you can only bend so much with just hey, how big that is. So we're gonna switch to uh, needle nose so we can bend it more. But before you do that, you need to make sure that you undo this harness in the back, which has a pin there and right there. Several months later. All right, people. So Ricky is off doing a video call with a customer on a Saturday. Fantastic. Anyway, so the, I kind of want to show you what you're going to want to get when you're massaging this metal. So the best thing was just using these vice grips and literally just holding them upside down and grabbing the metal and bending. And what you're going to notice is where you had that old harness where these two pins are, there is a uh, another sheet of metal there to reinforce it. Same thing with this guy down here. It's much stronger. But if you come in at an angle with this guy, come on. See how that kind of came off? And you just gotta perfectly line it up. And then boom, you're in business just like that. Producing persuasion. What is persuasion? I like to call this leverage. What is leverage? Beautiful. This is like that. And then we grab this like this. And then you pull with all your muscle. <laughs> Big muscle. <laughs> Ratcheting persuasion. This is top of the line. Oh man, we're getting somewhere now. It's spinning. Alright, so. Oh yes. Big muscle. Oh, oh, bye. Oh, bye. Bye, little friend. Oh, oh. Wow. Hello, Thunder. Got stripes on there you gave me. Got some nice trail rash already. So with some persuasion, some altering. Yeah. We finally now remove this. Oh lordy. Tremendously long. Look at this thing. Got it. There we go. 
Ah, goodbye UCA. Let's briefly explain what we did. So, the bending the metal, that was great, but what really helped, and we'll link the video, because like we said, if you're here for a professional install, go somewhere else. This was set up like this, and then you can get it to a point, like this, this isn't attached, and it'll rub up against that. And then you take that pry bar, and you bend it, and that'll force the bolt out, and it has a little bit of play in it, and then that is when you can get it out. And then, y'all remember this guy? I was trying to sandwich the leaf springs, and I realized I forgot to put the pinion angle shim in, and while removing it, I must have gotten a piece of debris and carried all the trash clean up. We used that on the end, and then hammered it. And then that, when you, if you have two people, or, I mean, you could probably do it in two hands, it then forces it out, and then you're not gonna run into anything else. And, that way we, the, the head is fine, the threads are fine, because we were hitting in the middle, so that's how we got it out. So game plan, All Pro Off-Road provides us, us money. four new washers to yep. replace the factory one that was up here and back here. We now take these washers and they will get installed, one on the inside, one on the outside on both sides, and then we reuse the factory nut and torque it to 85 foot-pounds. Through the... So the bolt now is through. Um, what we had was the washer was lined up with the bushing, but the uh, control arm, we had attached it to here just to make it easier. And then we disconnected it, right? Mm -hmm. And then that allowed us to um, pivot it up the way that it needed to. And then that lined everything up and then boom. So now One that more. last washer is just gonna be on with the um, factory nut. All right, guys, so there was a little bit of gunk on the bolts for the All Pro. Uh, full disclaimer, these are not brand new. These were sponsored um, by Imperial TRD Pro, but they are uh, obviously still used. We we'll used some Blaster Multimax just to clean up the threads a little bit, and Mr. Ricky here is saying that they are much better already. So, um, yeah, just a little bit of cleaning to make it easier. All right, we have tightened this nut for the upper control arm uh, uniball snug. We'll torque it when all the weight's on the vehicle. Now we're gonna reinstall the bolt for the brake line bracket into the factory location. And then per all pro off-road directions, we are going to put a zip tie around this ABS line and around this upper control arm to With the bracket? support it. We are going to remove the bracket, which simply unclips from right here and right there. Mmm. Zip zip, am I right, kids? Right. All right. <laughs> Clippy clippy. Oh, oh no. And try to cut it flush so you don't cut yourself. Per All Pro Off Road instructions, 81 foot pounds and the through bolt is 85. Nice. Good stuff. Okay, so the it's a little rough, but the main thing to show here is that we did bend it back and then we are putting this body harness, body harness back in. So it's now secured and it won't be fumbling about. All right, people, so the splash guards are in. This side's pretty much done, huh? All done. All right, next side. Kind of the same thing over here. Um, rinse and repeat, it started with the splash guards, obviously, uh, what, took the brake line bracket off, loosened this dude, this dude up here, and then we just cracked this and your uh, sway bar. Um, UCAs, I mean, are, the, are they easier than doing a lift, would you say, in the front? They're on par. They're, if like it was as simple as doing this and just pulling this out, this would be a 10 times easier, but it's the fact that Toyota doesn't know how to design. And whatever reason, I'm sure we'll find out someday. I don't even, like that literally has to be on there before the, the body goes on there. I think upper control arms are easier than the coilovers, but more finesse is required. Yeah, it's like you make a lot of progress here and they're like, oh, okay, cool. And then you got to like really work for this next part. So, so the intricate process with this is really just start taking your vice grips and you're really just going to clamp on and start bending this back. And it's not as thick as it seems. And this is actually the, this is the driver's side now. And I think it might be a little bit easier than the passenger side. We'll see. All right. Very nice. Uh, obviously we're doing the driver's side now and trying to get the bolt out when you get it You know, you'll hit the thing but the the bending on this side was really really easy compared to last side And then you run into this guy, which honestly we don't know what it is So quick tip recommend bungee for your um, body harness just to like bungee it to something I actually have it to the other side <laughs> and then 
the main thing is this big L thing is in the way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to undo your batteries like what? Hold down bar. Hold down bar. So you undo that, it'll come undone, and then that's still gonna be blocking. So this little L bracket, there's a 10 mil here that you have to undo. And then you'll undo, you'll take out the tray. So if you have a buddy or you can do it by yourself, uh, just lift it up and this can slide out. It's, it's bendy and it's got these two nubs that we'll have to reline up. That should be fun. And then that'll give you the room to be able to get this off. And then now you can see that's our bolt right there. And we should be able to slide it through uh, very similar to last time with the, the pry bar. Alrighty people, so when you have that thing out of the way, it comes out so much easier. And then we've got some bungees going here. So this one is on the spindle. This one's on the that body harness just to make our life easier. And see this is just holding it up so there's no tension and all that and then we actually did already remove that bracket that goes on the old uh, uca right there okay driver's side grand scheme uh, way better once you get that bolt once you get this separated that thing goes in so easy if you have a buddy i honestly i don't know how you wouldn't do this without a friend like good luck but we got it super fast and it looks good <laughs> so <laughs> is it easier to not remove the battery or to remove the easier. battery easier. The two little nubby nubs go on the outside and like that on the outside of this if you're gonna remove that. So that's back in, this is in, that's attached and now we're torquing stuff down. Alright people, we are jumping into the skid plate install. These Thank you, beautiful, RCI. These beautiful, beautiful RCI skids that are gonna murder anything in their path. So we already removed uh, old Frank here, the old skid, and now he is suffering underneath this one. That 68 one weighs pounds. 68 pounds. And so we're gonna get this thing in here. All right, so we're getting ahead of ourselves. We gotta remove the OEM brackets here. One piece of advice that's highly recommended is to print out the instructions like we did. So that, way, <laughs> that way you don't have to like look at your phone and all that. You can just reference your instructions right here. Uh, <laughs> loosen. Alrighty. Okay. All right, so if you have a 2016 or newer Tacoma, I just, I just went deaf, these little protector bars go away. All right, update time, people. The, this is the transmission skid is just above us, and we have just fitted them together. So super nice, all straight one piece at the end, and so we're almost done with this one. Alrighty, welcome to day two of install. I'll kind of show you what we're working with. So what we ran into yesterday is we had a hard deadline of when we just had to stop working. We have the front and the transmission skid are all done. And obviously we need to do the transfer case skid, but here we are. So let's get to it. Hey, don't be like me, eat, okay? There's these two like frame rail caps as I call them. There's one here and there's one there. You're gonna wanna take those off and then you're also going to want to disconnect this brake line bracket. And then that side obviously has the threads but on that side they're hidden so we're gonna take those little guys off. So if you remember a mirror install video. So they put these little catchy condom covers over to prevent moisture and air. These are very similar stickers to what we did. And they're basically just factory stickers that they mirror the frame but for this side they are not used so they just cover them up to try and help gunk from nice it. Nice clean factory it. frame. Yeah, not for long but. <laughs> <laughs> so you just take those off and then that allows you to have holes to put the stuff into. So here we go, the brake line brackets out and then the cap for the frame is also out as well. to get this nice and flush one trick that we just figured out was just getting a jack and just you know gets it nice and tight and then that way this up here is as tight as possible looking good under here ready for anything 
So right now we're just doing some anti-seize on these uh, bolts and we're gonna go through all of them and just to get them easier to, they need to come out in the future, which someday they will. Alrighty, we're wrapped up here. The truck is prepared for war now. So full skids. Well, as far as the three piece kit is concerned, we're still gonna have to someday get the gas tank and the rear diff. Yes. Thankfully, RCI thinks of us lifted folk. The skid plate is completely compatible, so the way that it mounts, it, it uh, comes down lower in the front instead of a gradual slope. It's more of a harsher slope, and so you can see drop diff kit. Very, very happy that we didn't have to do any more cutting and prying, but I'm gonna let this poor man have his own privacy, and I'm gonna get out of his life, so let's roll. Guys, this is going to wrap up the vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless, and we'll see you guys next time.